Gazette du Togo, une vision sur l'actualité togolaise et sur le monde. Le développement, le bien-être social, le respect de la dignité humaine sont entre autres les motifs que défendent des Togolais de la diaspora. Ils sont soucieux de l'avenir et surtout de ce bien-être de leurs compatriotes et l'ont toujours démontré plusieurs fois à travers des actes posés allant dans le sens du développement bien sûr et du respect de la dignité humaine. Eux, ce sont ces citoyens d'origine togolaise vivant au Royaume-Uni, membres du mouvement UKTDM, entendez UK Togolese Diaspora Movement. Le 8 janvier dernier, après plusieurs tentatives, une délégation du dit mouvement a rencontré les députés londoniens. Au Parlement de Londres, la délégation de UKTDM a exposé la situation togolaise aux députés anglais et leur ont informé sur les raisons réelles qui sous-tendent la grave crise sociopolitique que traverse le Togo et de l'impunité qui a fait son lit au pays. Dans cette dynamique, ils ont informé les députés sur les nombreux cas de violation des droits de l'homme, surtout l'assassinat lâche des adolescents ces derniers mois. La députée anglaise informe ses collègues sur la situation du Togo. The human rights abuses, abuses occurring in Togo rest heavy on the shoulders of those of my constituents who left that country to settle in the UK. Because although they may be far from home, news of the continued abuse of their relatives and fellow countrymen and women faced at the hands of the authorities and security forces reaches them nearly every week. Not only do the authorities heavily curtail people's right to freedom of expression and freedom of assembly for peaceful protest, it has also been well documented that security forces use excessive force against demonstrators. Last year, Amnesty International stated that during one of the mass demonstrations organised by opposition groups, at least 11 people were killed by security forces. In addition to this, random arrests, detentions, torture and other ill-treatment of prisoners, human rights defenders, journalists and civilians continue. In Togo, it appears that human rights violations continue with impunity. The government and the security forces have a blatant disregard for justice and the rule of international law. I will. I mean, well, thank you for bringing this matter to Westminster Hall for consideration. Uh, would Donald Blady not agree that the shocking report of the death of a 12-year-old in the run-up to the elections in December in Togo is an example of the fact that human rights are still being suppressed uh, at, at great levels in Togo? And we in this House must do more to encourage human rights, possibly by using, and I put this forward as a, as a suggestion, by using the Togolese ambition to be a Commonwealth member nation as a way of influencing what is happening there. Yeah. I thank my honourable friend for his intervention, particularly because it gave me time to get breath because I've just run all the way across the estate. And it's not for many things that a 63-year-old woman would run across the estate, but I would for human rights in Togo. And the issues of the election are very important. I'll touch on them later. Um, Last year, Amnesty International stated that during one of the mass demonstrations organised, at least 12 people were killed. In addition to this, as we've heard, random arrests, detentions, torture. It appears in Togo human rights violations, violations continue with impunity. The government and the security forces have a blatant disregard for justice and the rule of international law. Now it's time for the government of Togo to practice what they preach and fulfil the promises they have made to the United Nations, the international community, and most importantly, the promises that they've made to their people. Togo is a United Nations member state. As its protocol, the UN conducts a universal periodic review to review the human rights records of all United Nations member states. The first cycle of the UN universal periodic review of Togo took place in October 2011. 
Of the 133 recommendations that were made, Togo rejected a number, including a recommendation to amend or repeal the laws used to crack down on journalists and human rights defenders, a recommendation regarding the protection of lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender people within their country, and a recommendation regarding the inclusion of laws which criminalise defamation. There has been some progress in the ratification of crucial inter international instruments. However, there is so much more to do, and it is imperative that Togo lives up to the recommendations that it has agreed to within the Universal Periodic Review, not just on paper, but in practice too. Togo was elected to join the Human Rights Council for 2016 and 18, and was expected to use this mandate to strengthen its human rights commitments. Combating the issue of torture was one of the key recommendations made in the review. Although the country ratified the optional protocol to the Convention Against Torture by rolling out capacity-strengthening workshops to combat torture for criminal investigations and prison and rehabilitation officers, torture remains in the country, used by security forces against participants in anti-government demonstrations. Many members will be aware that between August and December 2017, the authorities continued violent crackdowns during mass protests. These protests were led by the political opposition calling for, amongst other things, the end of President Forna Singbe's tenure as president. Freedom House is an independent watchdog organisation which dedicates itself to the expansion of freedom and democracy around the world. In their country overview in 2018, they stated, Togo's politics have been dominated since 1963 by Nasang Nasang Bay, I, for the Aye Dema and his son, the current president. Advantage, advantages including a security service dominated by the president's ethnic group, disproportionately drawn election districts and a fractured opposition have helped the president and his party hold on to power and in 2017, protests calling for the reintroduction of term limits were harshly repressed. The President has been in power since 2005. His predecessor, his father, held on to power for 38 years before his death. Claims of the repression of protests which call for the reintroduction of term limits is supported by many human rights organisations and institutions. According to Amnesty, protests were messed with excessive use of force by the security forces. Amongst other instances, security forces used live ammunition in 2017 to disperse a protest against rising oil prices in the country. Several people were injured and many were surprised that only one death was recorded. In June 2017, videos posted on the internet showed members of the security forces armed with shotguns beating students on the ground with batons as student demonstrations. The demonstration was calling for improved living conditions. This outrageous act occurred at the University of Lome within their student union. As if this wasn't enough, security forces arrested at least 19 students, 17 of whom were later released. Several students stated in court that they had been beaten during their arrest and transfer. At other demonstrations, members of the political opposition held mass demonstrations in major cities across Togo. There are reports that these demonstrations were broken up by security forces again who used tear gas, batons, water cannons and live ammunition. It is simply not humane to use water cannons to disperse crowds, most certainly not for people who have a right to peacefully protest under the Declaration of Human Rights, which Togo became a signatory to on the 20th of September 1960. One of the main things that Togo seems to have refused to address or improve was the authorities' repression of people's right to freedom of expression. In Freedom House's report, Freedom of the Net, the Rise of the D Digital Authoritarianism, it states, in almost half of the countries where internet freedom declines, the reductions were related to elections. Unsurprisingly, this is true in the case of Togo. In September 2017, authorities shut down the internet for nine days in retaliation to opposition-led protests. In doing so, they disrupted the organisation of protests and heavily disrupted the work of human rights defenders and journalists who were monitoring the protests. These reports were later verified by the digital rights group Internet Without Borders. Togo is a signatory to the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights and its shutdown on mobile phone services and the internet is a violation of Article 19 of the Covenant. 
In a year where human rights defenders are operating in a shrinking civil society space, I hope this House will agree with me that disrupting crucial work of human rights organisations and human rights defenders is detrimental to democracy and should not be allowed to continue. There have been many cases that have been brought to my attention to highlight the gross extent to which the Togolese government curtails the rights of people. They do so by arbitrarily closing down media outlets and arresting community and opposition leaders to crack down on anyone who expresses dissent. One such case is the case of Robert Kossa Atavo. Robert is a journalist who was viciously attacked with batons in the city of Lome by the police. He was also handcuffed and in a successful attempt to prevent him from photo documenting an eviction which was taking place. He was subsequently detained and had his images deleted without, before being released without charge. Although he filed a complaint with the prosecution service, he received no response. It's a classic example of the security forces using extreme force and brutality to curtail the legitimate work of journalists and human rights defenders. They were propped up by the general prosecutor who issued a warning stating that anyone who reported on Robert's attack would face criminal prosecution for disseminating fake news. Where a government who doesn't respect human rights is propped up by a judicial system who does not respect the rule of law and intimidates those seeking justice for crimes committed, what hope is there for the people in that country? I'd like to thank the Minister of State for the attention uh, she gave to me in her written answers uh, that she's already provided to me. Uh, in November last year, the Minister responded to one of my written questions on Togo, saying that the UK government supported the President of Ghana and that they encouraged both the government and the opposition in Togo to work towards ensuring that the elections to be held on December the 20th would be free, fair and void of violence. As many will be aware, sadly, the election was anything but. According to various news sources, in the days leading up to the elections, many people were killed by security forces. Despite advice given by Ghana and the UK, protesters still gathered and organised demonstrations in the lead up to the elections, which in turn flared violence. Fourteen opposition parties joined forces to call on their supporters to boycott the elections amid fears that the president would put forth legislation to allow him to run again in 2020 and 2025. During the mediation talks held by Ghana and Guinea to resolve the crisis, the opposition asked for an overhaul of the Electoral Commission and to set term limits, but this was not to be. Elections are a major source of contention and strife in Togo. But how many more people will be arbitrarily arrested and detained, and how many more people will tell us their tales of torture, simply because they exercise the human right to freedom of expression or opinion? Can my Pres honourable friend give way I will. on that point? I congratulate my honourable friend for securing this debate. I think it's a really important one, and like her, I will have many constituents, some of whom are, are watching from the gallery here, who will be watching this debate closely and will have real concerns about friends and family still in Togo. Does she share my concern in particular about the repressive cyber security law that the National Assembly recently passed, which uh, human rights campaigners around the world agree will have a chilling effect on freedom of expression? I thank my honourable friend for his intervention, and I do have major concerns about that. If people aren't free to access information and communicate with each other, it, it's, it's, it puts Togo in the same position as many other regimes, such as China. Um, This is a country whose government beats its opposition for expressing dissent and silences its media and journalists. In November, the minister, the minister replied to a question I raised and said that the UK government recommended that allegations of arbitrary arrest and detention and allegations of tortured, torture be investigated thoroughly. Reports from Amnesty and other human rights organisations dispute that this has taken place in Togo. So I would like to ask the minister five questions um, of which if she cannot answer now, I would request that she just sends me a written response. The first question um, is that I would ask the Minister, what can and what will the Foreign Office do to encourage Togo to end their security forces' excessive use of force and for their authorities to respect the rights of people to peaceful protest? The second question is, does the Minister join me in condemning the Togolese government for shutting down the internet and for contravening Article 19 of the International Convention on Civil and Political Rights? And will the third question is, will the Minister tell me what assistance the UK is giving to support human rights defenders and civil society in Togo? Question number four, 
Can the minister tell me how the Foreign Office might encourage Togo to ensure that perpetrators of human rights abuses are held accountable and prosecuted in a court of law? And the final question is, will the minister ask the Togolese government when the High Commissioner for Reconciliation and Strengthening National Unity will action the plan to implement the Truth and Justice Reconciliation Commission's 68 recommendations? The 10th of December 2018 marked the 70th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and Togo is a signatory to this declaration. On paper, Togo says that it's doing the right things to show that it cares about and is committed to human rights values and principles, and I've touched on these things throughout my speech. But in reality, the government and the security forces fail to adhere to human rights standards. Togo seems to be a country open to improvement when it comes to its human rights failings. This, this is why it was elected to the Human Rights Council. However, we seem to be dealing with a government that makes assurances to protect human rights and adhere to human rights standards one day and abandons these values when they think that nobody is looking. I will. I will. Congratulate you on this excellent debate. Um, the, the UN, and to a less degree, um, other international organisations are somewhat distant from Lomé. Uh, would she agree that it would be a good role, in addition to the leadership Ghana is showing, for the economic community of West Africa, ECOWAS, to take a greater role in Togo um, and providing some leadership as to what the international community um, wants? Because actually that kind of local, um, regional uh, leadership sometimes works better than uh, distant people from New York telling uh, individuals how to run their country. I thank the Honourable Member for his intervention and I agree this, this isn't a job for just one country, it's a job for many and the UK alone can't act but the UK together with others can and um, anybody who can put pressure and alleviate the suffering of the people of Togo I think that should be welcome and encouraged and I'd be interested to know what the Minister's view is on that particular issue. Uh, I think I've just about covered everything, so it's my sincere hope that the UK government will work closely with the Togolese government to ensure that they are respecting human rights values, not just on paper, but in reality too. I don't want to have to have a situation in a year's time where I'm sitting in a constituency surgery with my constituents who come from Togo where they're telling me yet more stories like the ones that we've heard. I'm sure we're all appalled, and I'm sure the minister will do everything she can, and I'm interested to hear what that might be. Thank you. The question is that the House has considered human rights in Togo. Minister. Thank you very much, Mr Howarth, and it's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship this morning. And can I start by congratulating the Honourable Member for Erith and Thames Mead for securing uh, today's important debate. And can I also, through her, thank her constituents who have uh, rightly brought these uh, important matters to her attention and thus to the attention of uh, the House. And I start by saying that promoting human rights worldwide is generally part of UK foreign policy. We believe that everyone everywhere should enjoy equal rights and protections under the law. We believe that human rights are an essential foundation for a fairer, more secure and more prosperous world. And so standing up for human rights is not only the right thing to do in and of itself, but it's also the smart thing to do. And we pr promote in our work respect for human rights in a range of different ways, whether it's through quiet diplomacy and private discussions or supporting international public campaigns uh, with our international partners. Uh, on the subject of media freedom and in particular the uh, issue of the internet, we also are campaigning very much this year uh, for media freedom worldwide. And the Honourable Member will be aware that we've also increased our support to uh, the BBC World Service and our uh, overall coverage uh, across Africa in a variety of languages. Turning to Togo more specifically and the human rights situation there and uh, the, the, the question about what action is the UK government taking. Um, I'll start by just recapping uh, the, uh, the political situation as we see it uh, with President for Nassim Bey, who has been in power now uh, in Togo since 2005, following the death of his father, who had himself held the post for 37 years. The current president was elected for a third time in 2015, uh, having set aside the term limits that were in implicit, uh, uh, set out in the 1992 constitution. 
In fact, Togo is now the only country in the economic community of West African states, or ECOWAS, that does not currently have presidential term limits, and there have been increasing demands in recent years for this to change. However, the referendum that was due to be held on this issue in September 2017 did not go ahead. So since late 2017, Togolese opposition parties have joined together to form this 14-party coalition and have begun to stage protests in Lome and across the country demanding electoral reform, and these protests are, are ongoing. Unfortunately, as the Honourable Member said, there, have, there has been violence associated with these process, protests, mainly in the north of the country, perpetrated by both the protesters themselves but also by security forces. At least 12 people, including some members of the security forces, have been reported killed since August 2017. Nevertheless, reports are quite difficult for uh, us to corroborate because we don't, as the Honourable Member noted, have a permanent diplomatic presence in Togo, and media reporting can often be contradictory or uh, biased. Nonetheless, our non-resident High Commissioner, who's based in Ghana, continues to monitor the situation in Togo. He has, in the last 18 months, visited Lomé twice and keeps in touch with partners and multilateral institutions. I will give way to my honourable friend. Yeah. does a fabulous job, as did John Benjamin uh, before. But with the expansion of the network across Africa, is there a possibility that we could get greater representation in Lomé, maybe within a three-year time frame? Is, uh, is, that, is that something that's in the pipeline? Well, I was going to uh, mention that we have an honorary consul uh, in uh, Lomé called Sitso Kultaello. I'll make sure that Hansard gets the right spelling on that. Um, uh, and uh, as my honourable friend mentions, we are uh, increasing uh, the range of roles and our diplomatic presence across a range of different African countries. Under current plans, uh, we are not anticipating opening an outpost uh, in Togo directly, uh, but we are anticipating increasing the representation uh, in uh, uh, Ghana, uh, and we're also anticipating, as uh, he will know, uh, the coverage in terms of po political affairs is done from Abidjan, so we're also uh, increasing uh, presence uh, across West Africa. So uh, on that point, I will give way to, my honorable, uh, to the Honourable Lady. Yeah. Of giving way. On that particular point, um, if I meet again with my constituents, because they've expressed their dissatisfaction with the way that system currently works, if they uh, give me examples of where it's ineffective, I will write to her, will she respond to me if I do that? Well, I would um, uh, welcome that, um, as she knows, uh, and the specifics, the more specific the better, is always very helpful. But I will say that one of the uh, uh, points that I've raised with the Togolese chargé d'affaires here in London uh, is the issue of accreditation of our uh, representative from uh, the uh, uh, High Commission in Ghana and the, indeed the Honorary Consul. And we would like to see that paperwork uh, finalised uh, because it's been outstanding for longer than it should have been. Uh, but in terms of regional mediation, as my honourable friend said, uh, we do believe that uh, ECOWAS has a very important role to play here. We think that they are in fact best placed to mediate in the current political crisis, as they did so successfully in the example of Gambia. And we support the efforts of both the presidents of Ghana and of Guinea uh, to this end. And indeed, a roadmap uh, was brokered by ECOWAS in July of 2018. And we urge both the Togolese government and the opposition parties to implement that roadmap and encourage all parties to resolve the crisis peacefully through a political agreement. Regarding the political situation more broadly, it was encouraging that legislative elections did take place on the 20th of December, and they were assessed by ECOWAS monitors to have been credible and to have been non-violent. However, it's concerning that the local elections that were due on the 16th of December were postponed for an unspecified period, and regrettable, of course, that uh, there were not more opposition parties who stood in those elections. Turning to the wider human rights picture, the UK welcomed the positive progress made by Togo during their last UN Universal Periodic Review, which was in 2016. 
This included taking steps to prevent torture and other human rights violations by the security forces and releasing a number of political de detainees. Clearly, where allegations have been made of uh, these, uh, it would be important for that to be fed in so that that can uh, be reflected in future uh, United Nations Universal Periodic Reviews. We also welcomed uh, Togo's election to the Human Rights Council uh, from January 2016 and their decision at that time to impose a complete moratorium on the use of the death penalty and that was announced uh, at the UN in September of 2016. However, we have raised concerns about uh, child trafficking, about prison policies, about prison overcrowding and about the treatment of de detainees in prison. And at the time of their universal periodic review, we urged Togolese authorities to investigate thoroughly all allegations of torture uh, and the allegations of arbitrary arrest and detention. We also remain concerned about the government of Togo's continued resistance to provide legal protections for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and intersex people. And we've urged them to ensure that the human rights of every individual in Togo is prote protected by law. When I met with the Togolese Chargé d'Affaires in London recently, I raised our concerns about human rights and took the opportunity to emphasize the importance of both implementing the roadmap and of holding free, fair and peaceful local elections. We also discussed UK support for the economic development of Togo. The UK uh, uh, recognizes that Togo uh, is a country with a very low average income we provide around £12 million of development assistance uh, annually, uh, not directly through the government, but through a range of non-government organisations. Uh, in 2018, this included £1.6 million to the UN Population Fund, which supports rep reproductive health care and development across the country. In conclusion, the UK government uh, welcomes uh, the steps taken by the Togolese government uh, to improve human rights in some areas. However, we remain concerned about reports of violence, about reports of human rights abuses, and uh, about reports of violations associated with political protests. Uh, uh, indeed, the treatment of detainees and the lack of protection for LGBTI people is a continued matter of concern. So we believe that, and um, we have said to the government of Togo that they must now step up and deliver real progress on human rights, uh, including progress on the ECOWAS uh, roadmap, and that this will benefit all of the people of Togo. The question is that this House has considered human rights in Togo. As many of that opinion say, aye. 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 With, with a bit more enthusiasm. Aye. aye. Paul Sly, coordinateur de UKTDM, au sortir de la rencontre avec les députés anglais. So the current political situation in Togo today is uh, known by the whole world. The whole world knows what is happening in Togo. Uh, a country where you know we've got a president uh, called uh, Fonya Singbe who has led the country together with his father for ha over half a century now, uh, nearly 53 years. Uh, so Togolese uh, crisis is today you know very serious. It is alarming. And this morning, uh, the case has been brought uh, to the parliament and we've heard from the Minister of State, we've heard from our local MPs. Uh, their answers were a bit rhetoric, but we are uh, hopeful. Uh, today's visit really, you know, is a kind of a leap of faith. Uh, we will carry on putting the pressure on the UK government, okay, to work with their counterparts and make sure, you know, the violations of human rights, the violations and the abuses uh, are stopped. You know, today the average Togolese person uh, lives uh, on two dollars a day. That is totally unacceptable. A country where only you know the minority has monopolized uh, the wealth of the country that belongs to to all of us. Unemployment is sky high. You know, the education system uh, is not working. Uh, the health system is severely affected where children and women are not getting the right treatment, hence uh, leading to unnecessary deaths. And, you know, we think uh, this is totally unacceptable in this day and in, in age. So, you know, we, you know, we're really happy that, you know, the case has been brought today uh, to, uh, uh, to the parliament. And, and like I said, we are very hopeful, hopeful that, you know, we will get the right answers in due course. 
Deo Gracias Dravi situe l'opinion publique sur l'importance de la rencontre avec les députés anglais. Et ceux qui ont pris le temps de parler de la situation du Togo à leurs députés respectifs ici et qui ont finalement amené ce débat au Parlement britannique. Je crois que ça c'est la, 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 la victoire d'aujourd'hui et l'opportunité qu'on a eue en tant que citoyen togolais d'échanger avec les officiels anglais par rapport à la situation qui prévaut dans notre pays. Vous voyez, nos frères, nos parents sont au pays et nous sommes inquiets de ce qui se passe. Et nous sommes très contents de, 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 de l'oreille attentive que ces officiels nous ont prêté par rapport à, à ce qu'on leur explique, ce qu'ils savent déjà, mais aussi ce que nous, on, on a pu ajouter à, aux informations qu'ils ont. Et donc l'espoir, c'est qu'ils vont, ils vont, comme ils nous l'ont promis, vous voyez, essayer d'aller encore à, à, à plus haut dans le gouvernement pour pouvoir faire une certaine pression sur le gouvernement togolais afin que les choses puissent changer. Et donc nous croyons que nous sommes sur la bonne, la bonne marche. Monsieur Dravi, chairman de la plateforme des associations togolaises de UK PTA. Ce matin, un groupe de citoyens togolais sont venus au palais de Westminster pour euh, contacter les membres du gouvernement britannique pour euh, participer au débat hein, qui a eu lieu sur la situation au Togo. Et ça fait plus de 50 ans que la situation au Togo dure et que le gouvernement togolais est en train de brimer la population, que tout marche mal, l'économie dégringole, la santé dégringole, l'éducation ne marche pas et il est temps qu'on fasse changer les choses. Et c'est pour ça que nous sommes debout et que nous luttons et que nous allons finalement euh, vaincre ce gouvernement. Merci. La députée anglaise, au sortir de la rencontre, s'entretient de nouveau avec les représentants togolais de UKTDM. Oh, right, right, okay. 
So that's what that, you need to do. Theresa is advising <laughs> so you, that. You get all of your network to write to their MPs and say, were they aware of this debate? Yeah. What will they do? If there's a future debate, what will they come and attend? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, yeah. And what we need to do is make sure that we get the right Okay. I'll speak to Emily Thornbury, who's our shadow foreign secretary, and ask her if she may be raising it in foreign question. Because okay. you just got to keep raising it. Yeah, keep raising it. Takes years. Yeah. As you know. Yeah. But, yeah. but they. The more, the more you bother them with it, the more yeah, they might yeah, actually come out. not, you know, because the, they give us answers, but they're not really answers. Yeah, they're mm. not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Anyway, I've got to go. All right, thanks, okay. Okay. thanks, Clarissa. I really You're appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your effort. Au terme de la rencontre avec les députés anglais, les membres de la délégation de UKTDM ont tenu à témoigner toute leur gratitude à tous les responsables de la coalition des 14 partis politiques de l'opposition, aux responsables religieux, notamment les prêtres, les pasteurs, les cadres musulmans, les responsables d'autres confessions religieuses, pour le sens du devoir patriotique qu'ils ont fait montre le 20 décembre dernier, démontrant au monde leur rejet du système qui régente le Togo depuis plusieurs décennies. Étant donné que l'objectif poursuivi, qui est la libération du peuple togolais du joug de la dictature, n'est pas atteint, UKTDM poursuit la lutte à travers d'autres actions et pour l'immédiat, l'organisation d'une manifestation le 19 janvier prochain à Londres et convie donc tous les Togolais et toutes les Togolaises, épris de paix, de justice et d'alternance, à se joindre à leurs frères et sœurs pour porter haut la voix du peuple togolais en souffrance. La Gazette du Togo une vision sur l'actualité togolaise et sur le monde. Rejoignez-nous sur le www.lagazettedutogo.com ou sur nos comptes Facebook, Twitter et Youtube. Pour tout contact, écrivez à contact.lagazettedutogo.com ou appelez le 92 80 88 53. La Gazette du Togo, c'est l'information en continu.